let's take an example now. So here is a function for g times h, and we have two poles and two zeros. So first, let's just identify the poles and zeros of this system. So our zeros, it's already in a very nice form. If it's not, you can always, you have to factor it into a nice form. But this one, we have our zeros equal to negative three and negative four. So negative three, negative four. So we can go ahead and just plot that over here on our uh, S plane over here. So we're gonna go one, two, three, four. Extend this a little bit. Okay, so we can draw our zeros at negative four and negative three. We'll write this one, two, three, negatives, four. Okay, so we have our two zeros drawn there. And now we need to go find our two poles. So here we have negative two as a pole and negative one as a pole. So fairly straightforward. And so we can draw our poles in here. Okay. And from this rule, the real axis rule, we can now draw the parts of the root locus that exist on the real axis. So we have our negative one here, our first pole. So to the left of that, it's an odd number. We know that we have the root locus that exists there. To the left of this, there's two to the left of this point. So, or sorry, to the right of that point. So there's no root locus here. But when we hit here, there's three to the right of it. So we can draw the root locus there as well. So that's all of our basic rules are starting to get to be uh, achieved here. So if we tell Valerie that she needs to start at x, so she can start at one of these x's, and she has to move to one of these other poles, then how does she get there? It's kind of a joke, she can't jump, right? Um, you actually have to have a, a nice mean path between all of them. So how's she gonna get there? Well, one rule that we know is that we have to have symmetry, and we know we're gonna have two poles because we have two poles in our system here, and so we have two branches. So in order to get from here to here, and we also intuitively know, and if you just do a lot of these examples, that everything kind of moves in a circular path. So we know that approximately somewhere in here, and we call this a sketch of the root locus. So I don't need to, you don't need to know the exact point that it lifts off here, but generally somewhere in the middle here, we're going to get a circular path that goes from here and comes around to approximately somewhere in the middle. And then once the, the pole, so we're gonna have reflected across the top part too, see if I can draw this very well. Okay, so starting from this x, they go in towards the middle as k increases, right? And then it goes up and around, so this way. So the two different poles will split and they'll come back here. They'll meet one more point here, and then they will go off in opposite directions again towards their uh, reciprocal pole here, so is there a zero location. So the path that one pole might take, starting at negative one, going up and around, and then going to one of these other two values here. And for the sketch, it's not extremely important if it's you know exactly the right point. If you really need to get the exact point, it's best to use MATLAB. Okay, so this is actually, that's it. This is the basic sketch for the root locus of this system. So we know as we vary k, we can go up and around and go from, start from here, these two points, and move towards these two points. One important thing I'll state here is that here, luckily, we know instantly, when we look at all the zeros and poles in the left half plane, they're all negative, so they're all in the left half plane. So the stability of the system, the system will always be stable regardless of what k is. The important, more important things when happens when we have things that go into the right half plane, and then we have to evaluate what value of k will give us a stable system. For, for this one, k, we can pick any value and it will be stable. It just changes the way that the system reacts 
based on where the poles actually end up. Okay, so we're going to look at this in MATLAB real quick so we can get the exact picture of it. Now we're in MATLAB and we're going to look at the same problem. First we have to set up the transfer function. So if you remember, this is the multiplication of we had s plus 3 multiplied by the quantity s plus 4. So you end up with s squared plus 7s plus 12. The numerator and the denominator we had poles 2 and 3. So if you multiply that out you'll get s squared plus 3s plus 2. So, and just to confirm that, we can write that into our function, press enter, and we can see that this is the form it will take. And if we really just want to confirm, we can always check our pole locations here. Oh, good, negative 2, negative 1, and then our 0, of course, as well. So this is a good check if you're not sure to check all your math. So it looks good. So the great thing about MATLAB is that there's already a function that does everything for you. So if you want to look at the root locus, we put r locus, and then our transfer function, which we're calling gh here. And here we are, pops up with our root locus. So we have our points here, we see it negative 1, negative 2 is where it starts, and negative 3, negative 4 is where it ends up. And here you can see that it goes to, this is our called our break away point. And it's great because you can click on it and it'll tell you the gain where it will, will break away. Or if you want to see a different gain in the system, you can see lots of them, probably too many. Okay. And if you follow these around, you see they go here. This is the point where they come together and the break in point, and then they will go in separate ways. And here you can see they actually draw it for you. The green follows this way, so you can see which pole goes where, which when we drew on the board, you weren't exactly sure. MATLAB will show you exactly which pole goes where. So that's a way to confirm how this works. And you can use the root locus function in MATLAB to confirm your findings. So that will give you the exact root locus, whereas we're doing just the sketches to get a, an idea of what it looks like on the board. So I hope that helps with this example in finding the root locus.